Was Luis Suarez at Liverpool the best Premier League player of all time? Let's talk about that. Hey everyone, it is Vinya, that is FYW and I hope you are all having a fantastic day, a fantastic Saturday morning. My stomach is sore as hell, so I can't even have coffee, so I have to just sit here with my tea, no Ben 10 mug today. Of course it is Saturday, which means I'm bringing back, I still don't quite have a name for the series yet, but Controversial Saturdays basically, we ask you guys for your controversial football opinions, which you guys are always just welcome to put in the comment section down in this video for the next video, where every Saturday I'm going to try answer your controversial football opinions, which if you haven't seen part one, of course part one isn't really linked to part two, you guys can just click up above if I put that there, or in the description down below, I'll probably put that right there. So let's get into your controversial football opinions. The first controversial opinion by N underscore R99 was Luis Suarez at Liverpool in the 13-14 season was the best Premier League player ever. Um, I don't know, it's a tricky one to say because I feel like to become the best in a league you have to be there more than three years because he was really there only for around three years from 11 to 14 so i mean it's not the longest amount of time but luis suarez is a phenomenal striker he is a great striker he is one of the greatest strikers that we have witnessed uh, definitely in my generation and in the last decade he has been one of the best strikers but when you think of greats in the premier league striker wise at least or attacker wise you do get the likes of thierry henry wayne rooney comes to mind aguero although still playing alan shearer and the things all those strikers have in common is they've been at their club for a very long time so I would say Luis Suarez is one of the greatest strikers at least of the last decade or two but would I say he's the best ever Premier League striker I think he could definitely be in that conversation but I don't think he would win that conversation but at the same time if you look at his stats he did win golden boots with 31 goals in a season I mean that is insane it was a record that only Mo Salah could break with his 32 but I think when it comes to conversations like that I think Luis Suarez definitely could go down as one of the greatest Premier League players of all time but whether he was or wasn't I think that's just personal preference um, I think also a huge part of the conversation is did he win anything which I'm not a huge fan of fans that think like that of saying oh but he didn't win any trophies he didn't blah 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 if that makes sense with you because I think trophies do play a huge role in it especially if it is a very strong team but at the same time you can't only judge a player on their trophies because that's more of a team effort you know I think if he was in this current Liverpool team and he was in that Champions League winning team a season ago I think if he won the Champions League with Liverpool then I would say maybe he could be counted for that but because that Liverpool team itself was not so successful it's hard to say that he himself is the best Premier League striker or best Premier League player off all time and then past that you still get hundreds of like really good midfielders like Lampard like Skulls although lots of people don't really consider Skulls Gerard Beckham I don't know I think it's a very controversial race it's a great question I do think he's definitely in the conversation for it but would I say he's the best Premier League striker of all time I don't know not necessarily Bongo Cat's question is or his rather controversial statement is at one point in his life Wayne Rooney was the best player um, would I say he was ever the best player in the world I think for a very long time he was in the top five or top ten I don't necessarily think there was a specific pinpoint where I could say Wayne Rooney is the best player in the world I think that's a very tricky one um, yeah I don't necessarily think oh, look he's an England legend of course I think he's one of the best English players of all time I think he's probably the best Manchester United player of all time or at least one of them but it's also a very tricky one because I wouldn't say he was ever the best number one. I think he was always in that title for number one, which to me, I think it's more impressive that he's been in the top five or top 10 best players in the world for 10 years rather, or for, yeah, pretty much a decade being in the top 10 best players, rather than being the best in the world for a year or two, if that makes sense. I think he was consistently great, but not necessarily for a short period of time, the best. If that makes sense with you guys, I think Wayne Rooney is an absolute legend. He will go down in the game of football as a legend, as one of the best of all time. And I think his consistency is what made him great. The fact that he did it over such a long period of time, from the age of like 17, 18 at Everton, working all the way now, he's in his 30s at Derby, and he is still 
breaking records and you're still looking fantastic. Before I get too far into this, I do want to say I do do my Premier League predictions. Match Week 28 has come out and guys, the support on that has been incredible. 200 views. That is very good for me. I know it's not fantastic for most YouTubers, but I want to say thank you for your support. Once again, please do share and like so I can grow this channel because I really appreciate it everything you guys do for me. Isaac Andrew, hopefully I pronounced that right. VAR has killed the fun of the game, but it has improved the refs. Now, do I like VAR? No, I don't think it's quite ready for the Premier League quite yet. I think there are far too many mistakes currently with VAR. I think it would be a different story if VAR was consistent. If it didn't, just, yeah, I think that makes sense. I think everyone understands what I mean. I think there's way too many mistakes for VAR, which I think is a huge pity because you get sports like, let's use rugby, rugby as an example where rugby pretty much 100% of the time gives out the right results. I don't understand how you have that technology to look over something but yet you can still give the wrong results. That's just not something I understand by any means. Um, am I a fan of VR? I think it also takes away fun of the game you know. I don't think there's that fun element of football um, anymore when it comes to decision making because I mean what's the point of a ref? Because the ref actually has no say in this anymore. It's actually just VAR and then the ref agrees with VAR. I don't think the ref anymore will say oh let me look and make this decision. He's probably like you know what so what VAR will look over it and then tell me. I don't feel like it has improved the refs necessarily. I think it's made the refs lazy because they know they can just fall back on VAR and I don't feel like the refs have taken main control. The way that VAR worked in the World Cup in Russia, that's how it needs to work, where the ref will go to the box, look at it himself and then decide instead of being told what to do. Andy JB16 said, you shouldn't be allowed to score rebounds from penalties. I um, once again don't necessarily agree with that. I think a huge part of the game, a huge part of, oh, hello, son. A huge part of the fun in the game is that the keeper now has to be smart in the way that he does save um, so that it doesn't end up rebounding to player because what you are asking for is that it's close to a penalty shootout, obviously, which I'm assuming then if what happens when the keeper saves it or if um, it's not a goal, that it's a goal kick or something like that. I don't know. Obviously, that would have to be worked out I don't know it's a very because I mean the chance that a keeper saves it is very very rare it is very hard and I mean unless you're Schmeichel obviously but I do have to say it's very hard to save a penalty and point of me do agree with this because it should be you have one chance to score if you don't score we continue the game so I think it's down to personal preference on whether you'd prefer it or not obviously it's a controversial opinion that's how they work but I do have to say you know what part of me agrees with that I think you get one chance to either score it or you don't if not you carry on the game you shouldn't get a rebound and then have another chance to continue but the only thing I do like then about penalties is that another player could counter attack on that or the other team could counter attack on that and create beautiful play and score on the other side so I mean I don't know it's 50 50 for me Dohail24, sorry I probably pronounced it wrong, says money isn't ruining football. I think elements of money are ruining football to be honest with you. If I had to say, I wouldn't say money itself is ruining football. I would say players attitudes towards money has ruined football. The fact that, look you'll never get all those years ago like 10, 20 years ago what happens where a player will like will have like be playing really well for club and instead of passion he'll say you know what I want the kind of salary where I can afford a Ferrari every week because that's just not the mentality that football should have it should have more of mentality of or mentality of having passion in the game and I feel like a, a huge part of passion has been taken away from the game because of the likes of a player saying you know what I think I deserve more I think I'm better than this I want more money I think yeah as I said it's not money itself it's the players attitudes towards it but parts of money have really created interesting scenarios in football itself I mean the buy over or takeover of Manchester City like a decade or whatever ago where now it created Manchester City itself the new legacy where they are known as a successful team and that wouldn't have happened without money so once again it's got its goods and bads final question is by the gloves made is which footballers make my personal top five okay so I haven't written any notes down for this because I wanted to answer you know from my heart my opinion right now on the spot um, I don't know it's a tricky one I do have to say Messi because I'm a huge Messi fan I do think he's a great player after that I would say Ronaldo this isn't necessarily in order these are just players I would say are on my top five best players because I'm assuming these are the best players in my opinion and not necessarily my favorites so I have to say Messi probably Ronaldo has to be in there I would say Mane I think Mane is a fantastic player 
Kevin De Bruyne is an amazing midfielder and has to be probably the best midfielder in the world at the moment. And I don't know, the last one's pretty tricky because I have a thing is, do I only go on about attackers and midfielders? Do I bring in a defender after that? I don't know. I'd have to say at the moment, maybe Mbappe. I would say watching Mbappe just gives me a different kind of feeling, you know? So guys, now that you can see the sun is officially up, it is morning here. If you didn't think I was lying, I actually record this in the morning. You can see the sun is officially on my face, but before it gets too bad, let me just say, I hope you all have a really good day. I see my mic's fallen into my shirt, so let's hope the audio isn't too bad. But guys, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Please do subscribe so this channel can grow. I hope you all enjoyed your February. I hope you all currently enjoying your weekend. And I hope you all just have a fantastic time. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and yeah, all the good things. Have a great time. Drop some controversial questions in the comment section down below. Finn, cheers. Love all of you. Bye.